These specifications call for the small end to be 572 thousandths and uh, that's what I'm shooting for. I'm going to measure it with the uh, thin end of the calipers like this and at the moment we're at about uh, 600,000 so we don't have a whole lot to go. safety glasses no need for lubricant on this uh, soft aluminum okay and I just completed my last pass and I'll measure this end Right there, uh, 570, it should have been 572, but is isn't too important uh, here because it just moves your taper down in the socket a little bit, so we're a couple thousandths off there. So the turning is done. To be honest with you, I don't have a real good way to measure a taper here in the home workshop, but one way that uh, I think is fairly valid as I'm going to take this sleeve here which is almost new it's a real good condition without any marks on it and I've got it uh, uh, large end to small end kind of like you put a pair of shoes in a box and I'm just going to uh, measure it here and here and see if we're the same or close to being the same I don't imagine I can get it perfect but there I'm at about uh, 85 and when I come down to this end also is that showing up yes we're at about we're also at 85 and 85 in the middle verifying that uh, the two are the same I think that's a valid way of doing it now I'm going to show you another way with chalk when I worked at Caterpillar they would have had elaborate expensive methods of measuring this uh, machinery and equipment uh, measuring tools I've never even seen before are made specifically to, to measure certain jobs and then all that data went directly into a computer it really was a fantastic setup makes you wonder how they can even build some of those machines for a half million dollars and make money at it now I'm going to take some regular carpenter's chalk and I'm going to uh, chalk this surface up good I know it looks kind of transparent on the video but we're gonna get some chalk on there and then this is a brand new sleeve also it's a number two on the inside and we'll put that in there like that and it feels like a good fit you can see it's coming all the way through there twisting it a little bit pull it out it looks like an even distribution of chalk and then looking at it from the inside I know that's not going to show up but there is chalk pretty evenly distributed throughout the length of that I read that method in a, a machine magazine of some kind a long time ago another way would be I suppose to put some Prussian blue on there and uh, uh, turn it and you can see wh where the high spots are when they make these in a factory they probably have dedicated machinery for grinding these that is uh, preset or uh, engineered into the machine and uh, they're going to get the perfect tapers this turned out to be uh, pretty close I'm satisfied with it and the way I set up 
the taper attachment to cut a number two more taper. Now we're going to get back to the machine and we're going to cut an internal Morris taper in a little scrap of aluminum. I already drilled that out to half inch and I'm only this will not be a useful piece but just to show you how uh, to do an internal Morris taper or better yet an internal taper of any kind but we're going to leave the machine and the uh, taper attachment set at exactly what it is now and to me that would ensure that this part would match this part. I did not do that in the other video. See you at the Atlas lathe presently. Okay, the boring bar that I'm using is a, a small one. And matter of fact, if you want to know the size, it's a, a, a Borewright brand BL5-6, whatever that means. And it's uh, small for small diameters, but as you can see, it's just about the right length to uh, bore a small piece like this. You know it's troublesome if the piece is real long and it's a small boring bar because you're going to get a lot of flexing. Now the trick here is that we're going to have to put the boring bar in the Yaloris tool holder upside down like that and make sure it's on center. That way we do not have to change the angle on our taper attachment. Otherwise we would have to tilt it one and a half degrees in the other direction like I did in the other video. And this is really a better method because we don't want to change this because we want a real accurate taper. Now if the taper is for a machine handle or something that isn't very critical, then uh, go ahead and turn this. But uh, this is the way you ought to do it if you want to duplicate the taper. So I'll tighten this up, put this in the chuck, and we're about ready to start. There we go. I engage the power feed. There isn't going to be a whole lot to see during this operation. We are getting a uh, taper. Back it off. We'll start the second cut. Remember, back it way off and then approach the work again to eliminate backlash and uh, fit it in about 20 thousandths. They have to be lighter cuts with a boring bar because the boring bar is going to flex. And we're going to continue in that manner until the large end is uh, at. Uh, well, I've got to go get the, uh, the sheets and uh, get the specifications again. Now, the rest of this, I'm going to do most of it off taper. Off camera, rather. <laughs> Taper too, for that matter. This is going to be the last pass, I hope. We want it, or I want it to be about 650 thousandths or in that range, just so the plug fits in there the right distance. So I'm just going to take a few thousands off and I'm going to feed it real slow because, uh, and there's a little chatter in there right now. We'll tend to get that from a skinny boring bar if you don't feed it slow or a uh, light enough cut for your finishing pass. Slowing the feed way down, which I can do on the run with this, I don't have to stop the machine at a variable speed. That's going to be uh, all I'm going to show of the boring process, so it doesn't get too, you know what, boring. Okay, that pass is completed and the finish is acceptable. I got a little burr there, I'm not going to knock that off at this time, but uh, measuring it right near the uh, 
end of the large end. Oh man, we are on 650. Not that that is very important, but there we are. And I hope everybody understood why the tool is upside down when we're cutting on the back side. So you can see the work is coming up at the cutting tool. Over to the bench.